Welcome back to the Mythic Championship here in Las Vegas. I'm Alias V alongside Cedric Phillips, and we have a cracker of a match to bring you, friends. It's going to be John Rolfe versus Raphael Levy. And before we get into that game, we heard from Raphael. Let's see what he had to say. I'm Raphael Levy, and I'm from France. I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm the Hall of Famer. I'm the one with a million Pro Tours. I'm here to take everybody down. So the main thing is to uh, stay focused. Uh, I know I can think, I know I can play well. So this match is not going to be a problem. Strong words there from Raphael Levy. Let's see if he can back it up as we jump into game three between John Rolf and Raphael Levy. It is Esper Control versus Mono Red Aggro. One apiece for each of these players. Let's get right into it. So Raph loves to play aggressive strategies. Sometimes he sideboards into bigger, slower strategies and aggressive decks. And that is kind of being exhibited here by the treasure map on turn number two, showing that he's willing to play a little bit of a longer game. What's kind of funny is that John Rolf has had so much of his success over the past handful of years with Mono Red strategies. More based around Hazret, the Fervent and Glory Bringer uh, in the previous block, but Rolf knows his way around a, a ton of mountains, so he's going to have to try to beat them to move <laughs> on here. Legion Warboss hits the board, and the hasty little critter is going to swing in for one point of damage. So it's Kanta allowing John Rolf to... Oh, wait, hang on. Well, with, uh, there was with, just a missed. Uh, yeah, so with Legion Warboss, you have to announce that you're going to play it before you actually do play it so that you can set a stop and respond to it. Fortunately for Rolf, he was actually tapped out because yep. he deployed a search for his Kanta. But in the future, it is important to make sure they have that communication clarified so uh, we can fix that problem if it is one that does arise. So that's why you saw the two players talk back and forth very quickly. No worries there, though. We're going to continue as planned, and we're going with Drown Catacomb, Cry the Carnarium, getting rid of both the creatures on the board. We've got a stop in the draw step for Raphael Levy. Is he going to take a peek at the top of his deck? Let's see. Another mountain. That's a lot of mountains in hand. There's not uh, not that great, right? So it is a lot of mountains right now for Raph. You know, he's got a couple of copies of Treasure Map, which means, which means, pardon me, that he can activate both of them. Yeah. The idea here is to play a much longer game. There are some players that are not ready to play against Treasure Map, transforming into Treasure Cove, bringing a bunch of treasures along with it, and drawing a ton of cards. The idea here, if you're Raph, is I can go as long as you can go, and I can answer most of your stuff, and then ideally burn you out of the game. It's an interesting strategy after sideboard. They are in the third game, so perhaps it worked once for him already. We'll see if it can work potentially a second time. So treasure map is not something you typically see in the mono red deck, correct? Uh, in the sideboard, you do see it sometimes. Players kind of come and go with it. Uh, the plan here is treasure map and a combination of fight with fire. Fight with fire is somewhat flexible because one, it can take care of Lyra Dawnbringer, but two, you can of course deal 10 damage to your opponent. And if you find two copies, all of a sudden you've dealt 20 damage to your opponent. And what you're doing here is you're using a very large strategy with Experimental Frenzy, Chandra, which we're seeing here, which is going to be scribed to the top via treasure map. And you're saying, you know what, all of these small creatures that you kill with Kai's Wrath, those are gone. I'm not doing any of that nonsense. All of my spells are large and in charge. I like that plan. I like the uh, the one punch kill, as it is, as it were. So now we're going to see Chandra Fire Artisan on the board. She's going to exile something which we won't see played not yet. So that lightning strike is going to be in exile, and we're not going to see it cost. In response, though, we got the D Spark going to take care of Chandra. She's in exile now too, and Raphael is just left with treasure mapping it up until he gets a target for lightning strike. Yeah, it's incredibly important that these treasure maps actually transform and do their thing. You saw John actually put a copy of Moment of Craving into the graveyard with the Search for His Conta. That kind of highlights how Raph has changed his deck against a lot of mono red players. You would immediately leave that on top of your deck. It would kill a creature, would gain you some life, so on and so forth. That's not what these games are about after sideboard. So now John's got to make the decision of, do I play Teferi as my five mana threat or do I play Lyra Dawnbringer as my five mana threat of choice? It's going to be Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Probably just plussing here, drawing a card, untapping two lands on the end step. What did we find? We found Little T. So Big T and Little T are going to hang out pretty soon, I think. And we might be transforming one of these treasure maps on the upkeep. I think that's pretty important for Raph right now. One of them has two counters, the other has one. So being able to transform one of these into a treasure cove and get your treasures is actually a pretty nice place to be. But again, these Esper decks, they do like to go long. That's actually where they feel most comfortable. So for a mono red deck to say, you know what, I'm happy to try to go along with you 
into this deep late game, it can be a little bit risky. Sometimes it looks a little bit foolish, but sometimes the Esper players don't have the sideboard tools necessary to beat this strategy. So it's an interesting take here from Raph, and it might be working. The Ashina Pyromancer off the top going to help deal with this Teferi in conjunction with a Lightning Strike. So Big T, unfortunately, not going to get to hang out with Little T, as I predicted. Tough. And see, I like that, because what Viashino Pyromancer has done here is it's done some work. It dealt some damage to Little T, or excuse me, to Big, Big Teferi, T, yeah, Big and T. Lightning Strike in combination with Viashino Pyromancer have gotten the job done. Now, if a removal spell were to take care of Viashino Pyromancer, you'd say, okay, I don't really care. It did its job. I got, you know, enough of the damage dealt to Teferi to actually get it off of the battlefield. You take care of that 2-1, whatever. Let me keep my actual game plan going with Treasure Map and Treasure Cove. Finding cost down off of the search for Ezkanta. We're going to see Little Teferi come down. And what is Little Teferi going to do? He's sending back the second... No, 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 sorry. He, in response, he's activating the treasure map. And then Teferi is sending it back Correct. to the hand. There we go. So there are ways for... John to actually manage treasure maps. Little Teferi can bounce it, and of course we can see Big Teferi tuck it away. So it's not like once treasure map gets onto the battlefield, it's there forever. There are ways to manage it and slow it down, but Rafa's already able to transform one, which means he'll see probably oh. two cards a turn, and with another treasure map, he's going to keep trying to work this plan. These are all three treasure maps he has after sideboard. Is this a Revel and Riches deck? Uh, you know it's not. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a treat? To the disappointment to everyone at home, it is not oh. a Revel and Riches deck. All the jank brew is everywhere, let out a sigh. Chain Whirler on the top, though, for the treasure map scry. Let's take a look and see where it goes. Is it going to sit on top? So Chain is yeah. interesting in this spot because you would think traditionally, okay, that's just a creature that gets killed via cast down and Kai's Wrath, and that card doesn't actually matter. In this spot, Chain is going to come down. It's going to deal a point of damage to John. It's going to take care of Teferi Time Lover, which opens up the ability for G Viachino Pyromancer to try to deal two damage to John. So... He's playing a much slower plan as Wrath. We don't see this a ton magic. Sometimes Model Red doesn't have the tools to do this. And I'm not even sure how good this is in the format of Standard right now, but in this particular game, it's shaping up very nicely. He could be onto something, you know. He may just be onto something with these treasure maps. Viachina and Pyromancer so getting in for the two points of damage, but the Goblin Chain Whirler is in the bin, courtesy of a cost down. Search for Escanta now digging through. Oh, we see a Kaya's Wrath on top of the library for John Rolf. Does he keep it? Does he put it to the bottom? Again, that's the kind of decision he has to make right now where normally it would be a very easy decision. This one's a little bit more difficult. He's going to keep it right now. How good is that card going to be given the construction of Raph's deck after sideboard where it's all about drawing cards and burning out your opponent? We'll have to find out. But now Raph is actually being put to the true test. Lyra Dawnbringer in action now for John Rolf. This card is a massive threat, but as we know, Raphael Levy has ways to deal with it. He just has to find it. Where is that fight with fire that he needs to get rid of Lyra Dawnbringer? So he can... I like this treasure map in the mono red deck because like with most aggressive strategies, there's no real way to get card advantage, you know. We've got the experimental frenzies and the Chandras, but if those aren't there, you at least have treasure map to help you just get some stuff off the top of your deck. Now, what's scary about this go-long plan by Raph is, you know, obviously he's managing his draw steps with the scries and drawing cards with Treasure Cove, sacrificing the treasures, right? All of this is all well and good. However, at the end of the day, the deck that has the more powerful cards is John Rolfe's. Yeah. Search for his content has transformed, and as good as Treasure Map is, it's scrying and drawing cards and everything. Nothing really overtakes the power of activating as Kanta, the Sunken Ruin every single turn. So as much fun as this has been, mm -hmm. seeing Raph put mountains to the bottom and Gia 2 Lava Runners to the bottom and sacrificing treasures to draw cards, you better kill this Ira Dawnbringer it's going yeah. to kill you. Oh, yeah. You can see he's like, all right, I'm going to go digging. I need to find something that kills this flying birdie. Otherwise, he's in a bit of a pickle. Now, the, also part of this strategy is with Treasure Map and Treasure Cove doing its thing, ideally what you're able to do, as Raph has seen a lot of cards this game, is actually find an Experimental Frenzy, get that to stick, and then go absolutely ballistic that way. He hasn't found one yet in all the scrying that he's doing. Now, I'm sure he'll run into one somewhat soon, but he needs to find one sooner rather than later. Otherwise, once again, Lyra's going to win this game in short order. So we haven't seen an attack yet from Lyra, correct? No. Oh, not yet. I mean, no, she's just hanging out there. She's just soon, waiting. Soon, soon, I promise. Okay. All right. <laughs> also, a bit of a risky, well, you know, a bit of a consideration with Kai's Wrath having Lyra don't bring on the board. Obviously, you don't want to kill the angel. You want her to hang out and gain your life and keep you safe against these ferocious little red critters. But the fairy time raveler on the board now is going to kick away the tapped treasure map with the two counters on. And uh, just stop him from generating even more treasures. Lyra getting in for five points of damage, gaining five points of life. 
And just, yeah, being a solid threat in the air there for John Rolfe. Raph is still digging. You know, he, another mountain's going to go to the bottom. He's got to find Fought with Fire or Experimental Frenzy. We've seen this plan. Uh, once again, we have seen this plan actually take place in Magic before, in older formats, and certainly in this one. What players will ramp towards with Treasure Map, and those treasures are either uh, Fight with Fire with Kicker, or you'll see Bane Fire for X equals uh, whatever your life total one is. Million. Yeah, or certainly <laughs> very close to it. In this instance, X would probably equal mm. five to kill Lyra Dawnbringer. But again, Raph is digging really, really hard with Treasure Cove and sacrificing these treasures to draw cards he's got to find an answer to the angel that is step one still digging still finding mountains on the top no mountains behave Vyashina pyromancer will hit the board and get rid of teferi time raveler it certainly has the potential to i don't know how much raf actually cares about that card but it looks like he's going to finish it off yeah i think you i think it's just like an instinctive thing for mono red decks just to go it's a teferi get it All right Oh, we're swinging in here. Yes, of course, Lyra is tapped, so the two wizards are getting in for three points of damage. But we do have cost down in the hand of John Rolfe. Does he fire that off, get rid of the bigger threat, potentially? Or does he just hang on to it for a bit? His life total isn't under that much pressure. But it looks like we will see the cost down on the Viashina Pyromancer. And one of the things that John kind of wants to do at this stage of the game, too, is just start to convert his cards into actually doing something. He could pick a better spot for that cast down, sure. But you know what? Let's just cast that card. Let's make sure I use all my mana every single turn because I'm already. He already has kind of a. I've got four mana baked into activating Escanta the Sunken Rune. Three plus act actually using the Escanta. So let's just say, you know what? Let me start actually casting my cards and actually converting these cards because I don't win the game for having, you know, ending the game with, oh, I have the best hand, so I win, right? It's like, <laughs> you actually have to cast your spells in order to win the game. Well, could you imagine if that was a win condition in Esper, Magic? Esper would win a lot then. Because <laughs> all their cards are better than everyone else's. I shudder to think about that. All right, so an interesting attack there from Lyra, leaving Teferi vulnerable to an attack here. Well, Teferi... You won't die there, right? I mean, Teferi's going to... It'll draw a card. Maybe it'll tuck something away. Oh, Again, there we go. We're, we're seeing more of this you don't get to transform your treasure map type game mm. um, that John is playing on this side of things because he's just not letting Raph actually find something that's good. Gitu Lava Runner is another garbage card. And you see Raph starting to shake his head mm, and get a little bit a little frustrated, frustrated. Yeah, there. because he's not finding what he's looking for. He's got to find Fight with Fire. Direfully Daredevil isn't bad. Now, Cast Down can't kill Lyra Dawnbringer, no. so it is my hope that there's something in the graveyard for Raph to be able to use to be able to get this Ira Dawnbringer off the it's battlefield. Just a moment of craving, but even that's not going to get it done for him. He can get rid of Big Teferi. That's fine. Direfly Daredevil. Okay, oh, D-Spark spark. works. Actually, D -spark yeah. works. Oh, never mind. That's fine. I'll just steal your cards and kill your things with it. <laughs> Again, this is also part of the plan of playing longer, right? He's got a ton yeah. of copies of Dire Fleet Daredevil. He can use John's weapons against him, manage his Teferis, and keep going. Again, however, he's got to find a way to actually start to get this game over with, because if he doesn't, Ascanta is better than Treasure Map, and Ascanta will run away with the game. Exactly right. So, speak of the devil, it is now activating. Going to dig through the library, find something to help John Rolfe out here. Everything is at his, basically at his fingertips. Whatever he wants, he can go and find. And that's a Lyra. All right. So the the card that we just got rid of was there, but it looks like Cry of the Carnarium is going to be the pick. So he's got Kaya's Wrath, Oath of Kaya, Basilica Bell Haunt, and Cry of the Carnarium to deal with all of these creatures. Yeah, that's a pretty good place to be if you're John Rolfe. Again, this is a really nice hand here for John. However, one of the things that he doesn't have solved at this stage of thing is is the treasure map transforming into Treasure Cove next turn. And it's got two counters on it, third one on the way, probably on Raph's upkeep. So Raph, as far as actually getting to transform this thing, he's getting closer to being able to do that. John's got a multitude of ways of actually clearing up this battlefield yeah. between Kaya's Wrath and Cry of the Carnarium, but I'm sure he also wants to try to figure out, should I play Basilica Bell Haunt this turn as well, even though I'm not getting a card, and that's what he's going to do. So finding the treasure map again off the top of the library, and we're going to transform into Treasure Cove, finding Goblin Chain Whirler on the top. Are you going to go to the back? He's thinking about it. He's like, yeah, okay. To the back you go, Goblin Chain Whirler, no time for you. Three treasures off of the transformed treasure map, and we'll see the third hit the board this turn, potentially. He needs, to find, why not. He needs to find Frenzy so bad. He does. <laughs> if he can find Frenzy, he can actually start to get back in this game. He's, of course, got four copies in his deck. I'm shocked he hasn't found one yet. Lava That's Coil's, pretty good. Lava Coil's fine. You know, happy to get that 3-4 off the battlefield and actually get some damage through. What Rolf was setting up was a combination of play Basilica, Bell Haunt, brick wall your team, and then play Car Cry of the Carnarium and attack you with the Bell Haunt. Mm -hmm. Lava Coil just blew that play up. So if you're after, you're somewhat happy with finding that card. 
So there we go, we see the third treasure map hit the board, swinging in for six points of damage. John Rolf's life turtle is back to starting, so, you know, it's got a bit more work to do, but there are the threats of the wraths in John Rolf's hand, so these creatures aren't going to hang around for very long. Again, it looks like John's going to start his turn by activating his content. No surprise there, flying to Fairy Time Raveler. Now, if you're John, what's going through your head is, one, let me clear away all these creatures. Probably going to do it via Cry of the Carnarium. And then, two, how do I go about winning this game before Treasure Map? And assuming Wrath ever finds Experimental Frenzy, those start to take over. I wouldn't be surprised to see Oath of Kaya start doming Wrath. Yeah. Three damage here. <laughs> Another one puts Wrath down to four. It's going to go down to one. Yeah, Teferi bouncing one puts him down to one. So that might be John's win condition now. Again, Wrath... I don't know how you haven't found Experimental Frenzy this yet with ridiculous. all these mountains. This is ridiculous. Look at his face. He's even like, are you kidding me? I okay. Can... Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. We found it. Here we go. All right. We might see some fireworks. It took him long enough, but here we go. Buckle yourselves in, viewers. You're in for a treat, perhaps. Now, what... It sometimes behaves. It sometimes doesn't. We'll see what mana he actually wants to use to deploy this. Also, keep in mind that Raph has put a ton of mountains to the bottom of his deck. Yeah. So I would not see, be surprised at all to see some sort of crazy chain of cards come rolling off here. How you sequence this is very, very important. Which mana you use to deploy it is also very important as well because you might want to use Treasure Cove to do so. But right. here we go. One spell. Two spells. Two fanatical firebrands. That's a mountain. Fine. Three yep. spells. Be a Shina Pyromancer. Go on. Let him, let him go. Let him go. He's got to figure out how he wants Put to tap in, for coach. it. Put me in, coach. Okay, so Another back, back up frenzy. frenzy. Not too bad. Not great. All right, so that's just four potential playables there. Fanatical firebrands getting in for two points of damage. The Vichita Pyromancer are doming for two as well. Thoughty Rager is not going to do Horrible. anything right Horrible now. Horrible draw step. That's icky card. Ugh, you don't want to see that. Arguably the worst draw step in John's deck. <laughs> yeah, after like turn two or three or no, three. Well, even when, well, when is the red hand usually empty? It's just well, like the red hand cards. is the red hand is empty on occasion. <laughs> but when your opponent has experimental frenzy in the battlefield, you don't care about the cards no. that are in their hand, just the cards that are on top of their deck. So for for John there, that is arguably the worst draw in his deck. We'll see if his content can find something better to do than that. Okay, the burnout plan Ooh, is in effect. Here we go. Is he gonna get it here this turn? I don't think he has a mana for it all. I don't believe he has the mana to do all of this. No. Because it would take 12 mana. It would take cast Othakaya, bounce Othakaya, cast it, cast it again. All right. Cool. He can do it over the course of two turns, but it is it is in play that Wrath actually wins this game next turn because he has so much mana. It will be hard, but it is in play. It would be glorious. I, I can't it, argue with that. It would be glorious. Let's see. Let's see if Experimental Frenzy behaves. We know... That it's a very fickle little card. It's experimental, obviously. It <laughs> likes to do strange things. Let's this has got to be John's one. game plan. Looking through the graveyard here, I am curious if there's anything. Yep, Raph, Raph knows. Raph knows. Raph's been playing Magic so long. You see the reaction knowing Ugh. that it took me so long to find Experimental Frenzy to enact this game plan. Going down to one. Mm -hmm. This is He has its do or die now, literally. All right, Dire Fleet Daredevil, what do we find? Yep, so that's the big question is, what is there in the graveyard that can gain Raph some life or deal Moment some points of, of damage? Moment of Craving isn't great because it's going to take him from one to three. Mm -mm. And he can't bring back Kai's Wrath, of course, because that's an enchantment. It doesn't work with Dire Fleet Daredevil. So as he scans through the graveyard, this is a card he just has to play anyway to get through the Experimental yeah, Frenzy. Yeah. we got to find something else here. we got to find a crazy concoction of cards. Let's see what we find. So there's Dire Fleet Daredevil. What do we grab from the grave? We're going to grab Moment of Craving and probably just kill the Dire Fleet Daredevil because it can't attack this turn. Yeah, I mean, at this stage, you know, he can he can target it and we'll, we'll see what he wants to do because now he's found a copy of Fight with Fire on top of the deck as well. Oh, yes. Okie dokie. Let's see. Do we fire it off here for 10? Of course we do. Of course we do. Yeah, 10, I mean, 10 is, 10 is nice, but if you're Raph, you're hoping that there's no additional copy of Oath of Kaya or Teferi Time Raveler, but as we can see here in the booth and you can see at home, John Rolf That's has a mountain. Teferi Time Raveler. There's the other fight oh with fire. Oh my gosh. He's, can he survive this turn, though? No. I don't think he can. Nope. Oh, man. That is unreal. I bet you he is cursing every single mountain he put to the bottom of his deck right now. No, it's just, it, it took him too long <laughs> to find Experimental Frenzy. That's that's the long and the short of this game is he did everything that he was supposed to do as far as setting up this game plan goes. He was scrying lands to the bottom. He was interacting with his opponent and killing Lyra and managing the Planeswalkers. And eventually he's supposed to find Frenzy and do this. Yeah. And it took him too long to actually do this. And John's draw steps were somewhat favorable, but he also did a really nice job of managing the game and 
and finding those cards via Escanta the Sunken Ruin. He was uh -huh. able to find multiple copies of Oath of Kaya, rolled off it to Fairy Time Raveler that Raph doesn't know, actually Raph does know about yeah. because he's seen it. And so Raph is massaging the temples of his brain knowing that I think this is coming to an end. Yeah, it's heartbreaking for Raphael Levy. That'll be the end of his tournament because we're going to see Teferi bounce Oath of Kaya and just dome him for three. Here yeah, we that's, go. That's brutal because I think Raph did such a nice job of managing this game and his deck just did not cooperate with him. And you can see him shaking his head in that facial expression of just knowing, I have fight with fire on top of my deck for kicker to deal 10 more to you and I'm not going to be able to get the job done coming up one turn short. Oh, man. Heartbreaking stuff for Raphael Levy, but congratulations to John Rolf. He is still in this, friends. Don't go anywhere because after this short, short commercial break, we are revealing a brand new card for M20. So stay where you are. We will be right back.